There I am, Mon. It went from wall from fall to winter, like boom. I said it was it was so nice. We had such a nice fall, and now it's 25 degrees and the wind blowing and snowing. So, welcome to those that are here. Good to see everybody. Welcome to those listening on the radio, and welcome to those using our streaming service of Boxcast. If you're ever in the area. At this time in the morning, we'd, on Sunday, we'd love to have you come in and join us. Um, this is our first Sunday of Advent, and we do have three Advent readers. We need one for the last Sunday of, of the last Sunday of the month. The announcements have been scrolling. December first, unbelievable. Um, upcoming Sundays, next Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, and. <clears throat> Pastor Bev is doing the carols of Christmas, and we'll be looking at O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 23. And in two weeks, Lo, how a rose air blooming. And that is from Isaiah 7, 10 through 16. We're marching right along. Fellowship time, we, have, we are need, in need of volunteers to serve coffee and cookies and cheese and crackers. So a sign-up sheet is located in the welcome area. Church conference tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Um, we will be talking with the DS. On Zoom. On Zoom, yes, not here. 
uh, let Kelsey know if you want to attend and she will send you the link. And I guess I need to attend Kelsey, so send me the link. <laughs> Christmas sweater Sunday. I, I think you did. Time to don your favorite or least favorite Christmas sweater on Sunday, December 22nd. They'll be drawing for, to enter a drawing for a prize. Oh boy. So it could be your favorite or your ugly one. So see what you do. Um, yes, the mission people plus Ron and I had a wonderful meeting with Abby. She is the daughter of Mrs. Mullins Closet at Hart Public Schools that we support through our missions. And we had a nice visit with her, and uh, she's a lovely young lady. So it was good to meet somebody. She, was, she wanted to meet us for and thank us for supporting her mother's project. Computer's moving slow today or no? Oh, Kelsey's not there. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we are. There we are in all our glory. She disappeared, but she's back again. Okay. She was extremely grateful. Her mom's been by 14 years now. And Mrs. Mullins closet continues to thrive and take care of school yes. children and it's quite a legacy. And it's not just here in Oceana County. I think they had a, another home in Benzie County, right. and so it also is going strong up there as well. So she's just very proud that it's still going on and carrying on her mom's legacy. I have a thank you note while I'm... <laughs> I have a thank you note, and it says, just a note to say thanks, you're the best. And this is from Bob Snyder, Carrie's husband. Thank you so much for the nice warm quilt for the upcoming winter. He appreciated all the time and effort and the prayers that were put into it. So that was nice that Bob did that. Also today, December 1st, is the Oceana Singers Concert at 4 o'clock at the Heart United Methodist Church. We have several people uh, performing in it. We have Jenny is, is there and Christy Walsworth is there and Carrie Snyder and our own Kelsey it will be also singing this year. So I think she's thoroughly enjoyed it, although she's gone again. Ron's at the computer, so I don't know what's going on in the house. So as long as it keeps going. Anniversaries and birthdays. Do we have any anniversaries this week of December? How about birthdays? I guess not. If able, please stand for our call to worship. Lift up your, and as we do that, we breathe in God's grace and exhale God's praise. Please excuse my mistakes today. My head isn't always right here on the day of a concert. So uh, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory be Praise God Our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, and it's on page 196 in the hymnal and also on the screen. Thank you. 
may be seated. Let us pray. Almighty and amazing God, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Um, it may seem dark and dreary and colder, and some of us don't like the snow, and some of us love the snow. But Lord God, every day is beautiful for the joy of the redeemed. Lord God, we ask your Holy Spirit enter into this place. Fill us, Lord. Fill us from the tips of our from the tops of our head to the tips of our toes, uh, so that we may be a changed people when we leave this place. In your name we pray, amen. We light this candle of hope as a sign of our commitment to pay attention and prepare for the days that are surely coming and are already here. The days when God's kingdom of love, justice, and mercy will reign. One verse. the time that we share our joys and our concerns. Um, we start with our concerns first. Um, um, prayers for Claire for some, um, some stuff going on. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Anyone else? Anna? Starting his treatment tomorrow in Ford Hospital in Detroit. Okay, so Larry's starting treatment tomorrow at Ford Hospital in Detroit. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Any others? I'm not sure if our daughter is having knee replacement tomorrow morning. Okay, Jenny and Dick's daughter is having knee replacement surgery tomorrow morning. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Did I see anyone else's hand go up? Okay, shall we move on to joys? John's neck was over after six weeks with a heart attack. That's now been moved to rehab. Okay, um, Ron's nephew's wife has been moved uh, into rehab after her heart attack. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear yeah. our yeah. praise. Any others? I would like to thank Carol for filling in for me Sunday. Um, what, a, what a joy it was to, um, to hear the story of Zechariah told so well. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our praise. Um, did everyone have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, reasonably good. Okay, well, that's a joy too. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our praise. Any others? 
I guess we're waiting for the choir to sing. In other words, we need to pray for Marsha today as she leads the Oceana Singers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And while we're at it, speaking of mistakes, I'm going to be filling in for, uh, as the pianist, I'm doing double duty today as the pianist and, and giving the sermon today over in Shelby, so... <laughs> Look over my mistakes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any others? We were not here last week, but a huge gratefulness for all of our volunteers that helped us on um, the Thanksgiving basket day. The Thanksgiving baskets. Do we have a total? I know you gave it to me. 123. 123 baskets. Over 100%. Over 100% participation, wow. We couldn't have done it without you. No, no, and I don't, there was someone who showed up at the very last minute, and they were all gone. But you know, God moves in mysterious ways, so even that person's needs were fulfilled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Lord God, you are so great and so awesome. You give us hope um, in the darkness. You give us light that shines. You give us ways of transporting ourselves through the snow that doesn't involve cold. Lord, we lift up um, whatever was going on on the road there with the, the police officers there and taking pictures. And Lord, uh, for whatever happened, we pray, we lift up those parties. Lord, we lift up our world to you. Help us to focus where it needs to be. Lord, we lift all things to you with that which you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, so now is the time for children's time. It's going to be short and sweet because we don't have any kids today. But what have I got today? I have my my little advent calendar, and I asked Harry to put something in the box. But you know what? It didn't fit. <laughs> so here's what was supposed to go in the box. So what? what is it? And can anybody guess? It's an, angel. it's an angel. Well, what does an angel have to do with Christmas? An angel has everything to do with Christmas because it was an angel that came to Zechariah and an angel that came to Mary to say, fear not. Because good news is coming, and that's Jesus. And that's what Advent is all about. It's about preparing our hearts for the coming of the King, Jesus. <laughs> Shall we pray? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me just the way that I am. Thank you for... Um, for loving me, even though things don't always fit the way that they're supposed to. And things don't always go the way that they're supposed to. But Lord, we're going to start this, this December, this time of waiting and watching for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Speaking of Advent calendars, I've had an Advent calendar ever since I was in first grade. 
And my teacher's husband was in the service in Germany, and so they sent all of the Advent calendars back. So when I was passing them out to our grandchildren for Thanksgiving, my 25-year-old grandson, I said, do you still want one? He said, yes. <laughs> all right, Brendan. Well, we don't have chocolate in it. Ours is just, <laughs> ours is just windows with um, biblical pictures behind them. So. Our prep, Hymn of Preparation, Majesty, page 176, and on the screen. <laughs> Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taking from, taken from Ezekiel chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, the gate that faces toward the east. And behold, the glory of the, Lord, the God of Israel came from the way of the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. So, it is the first Sunday of Advent. Does it feel like we need a little Christmas? Does it feel, feel like we've got... <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Ah, because we needed a little sound to go with that little bit of Christmas, didn't we? So... We have been studying the Gospel of Mark all year, and guess what? We're not going to do it for the rest of the year. We're doing something different. So I chose the theme, The Carols of Christmas, and I'll tell you why. Because there is so much good theology in our Christmas carols, and yet we don't even realize it. So we're going to take a closer look this month at some of the carols we don't know, some of the carols that we do know. And we're going to look at what is behind these Christmas carols that we sing. Now, of course, we all know that ultimately their message is about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Okay. Wow, there's my point already. So we're going to start with... People look east, and before Kelsey shows the video, 
I'm just going to let you know that this was written by Eleanor Farjan. Uh, she was an author of children's books, uh, mainly in England. Her best known work, you might have heard of it. It's in the United Methodist Hymnal. It's called Morning is Broken. That was recorded by Cat Stevens. Um, this, is, this particular hymn is in 45 different hymnals. So here we go with People Look East. Just a note, did you notice that out of that choir, for those of you who were able to watch it, and people on the radio, of course, cannot see that, did you notice that only one person was smiling as they were singing? Just a note. <laughs> oh, because we need to sing with joy. So, it's called People Look East. So, you know, I am very directionally challenged. There's a reason why I have to live near a big lake. Because otherwise I have no idea where I'm at. And you think I'm joking. Oh, no. There's, there's a song called Shout to the Lord, right? And... They point in the directions of which, yeah, that doesn't work. That didn't work for me at one of my churches. I had no idea which way was north, south, east, and west. And even when I thought that I knew which way it was, I still didn't know. And we sang the song, and there was always one guy who was like, no, it's this way. <laughs> because, you know... I am just very directionally challenged. I can only hope that if I were lost in the woods somewhere, well, it would have to be overnight because I'd have to look to see where the sun comes up, right? Now that's scary. And which way does the sun go down? Well, you know what? When you're in the middle of the woods, you can't see it. That's it. I'm done. Stick a fork in it. Oh, because I am so directionally challenged. So you might wonder why on earth this hymn is about looking to the east. Well, here's one little factual tidbit that I, that I gleaned this week, that according to Hebrew tradition, that was the first way, is that Jesus calling? 
If, you, if it is, we're all in trouble. Okay, okay. Sorry, Jake. I couldn't help myself. Oh, that's why I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amen? Okay. Where was I? Oh, yeah. People look east. According to Hebraic tradition, when a person is going to point, they will always point east first. Let's see if I can do it. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, you know why? Because I know the lake's over there and the road's over there. Ha <laughs> ha. See, I'm home, right? So can you imagine living a life where you have to point east first? Can you imagine that? I mean, I would have been lost. But that was especially for you men. Do you point east when you're giving someone's direction? I mean, do you kind of figure out where your focus is when you're giving someone directions? Or do you go, well, you go past the Dollar General and you turn right, right? Yeah. Yeah, you Michiganders, I tell you. You see, I grew, I grew up in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and let me just tell you a little secret about, about living there. The streets are planned out very, in a very engineered fashion. We'll just call it that. Because all of the streets went from east to west. And all of, the, all of the avenues went north to south. So and they were all numbered according to which street number it was. So we lived at 7314 43rd Avenue. So it was the 73rd, so it was 73rd Street and 43rd Avenue. Anybody could find it, except for those presidential street names. Those were reserved for the streets that were curved, like Pershing Avenue or Roosevelt that went all the way diagonally from the intersection and it led right to the hospital. But basically, you could find wherever you were going, right? Moving on. So where are we going? Well, there are four verses to that song. And actually, you know, a lot of hymnals take out the third verse, which I don't really understand why, because we'll get to that in just a second. But in the first stanza, it's love the guest, love the rose, love the star, and love the Lord. I think it's 202 in the hymnal. Okay. So if anyone else is interested, it's 202 in the hymnal. Now, the first word in each one of these is the same. What is that? Love. love. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Love, love came down at Christmas. It was God's love for us that came down at Christmas. It was God's love that was born at Christmas. And what are we waiting for? We are waiting for the birth of our Lord, the Lord of love. So you see, in this song, there are actually five different ways, different names of Christ within the song. The first being love. The second one is love the guest. Now, mind you, there is a comma, so it is love the guest, not love the guest. Punctuation is important, people. And I thought, now, how, how on earth 
is Jesus known as the guest? And I struggled with this for a little bit, and then, then, in Matthew 25, we use this in our missions a lot. It says, Jesus says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. You invited me in. Jesus is the guest because God gives us the opportunity of invitation, of inviting Christ into our hearts. It's not a mandate because the Lord gives us free will. He wants us to invite him into our hearts, into our lives, into our marriages, into the good times, into the bad times, until that day when we feast at his heavenly banquet. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Love the guest who we ask into our hearts. Oops, we had pictures to go with that too. So also in the first stanza, it says, trim the hearth and set the table. So what does that mean? Anybody set the table on Thursday? No? You went somewhere else? Me too. But I still set the table. I helped. A little bit. A little bit. Loved every minute of it. So what you are doing is you are preparing for the guests, right? The guests that are going to show up at your Thanksgiving dinner. You already did this, right? This is what Advent is all about. Trim the hearth and set the table. Prepare your hearts. Prepare the way for the Lord. You know, in ancient days, when someone important was coming, some there would, they would hire people to go out in front of their procession and they would say, make way, make way, for the Lord is coming. Make way, for the Lord is coming. Prepare your hearts for Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Messiah, is coming. Now the second part, yeah, see that was love the rose. Jesus is often called the rose, or more specifically, the rose of Sharon which in some translations, it's a little bit different. But if we go to the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, 1 through 10, and it's labeled, in, at least in my Bible, the joy of the redeemed. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, some of them call it like the rose, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon, they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert In, sorry, there was a little light shining on here, and I just realized after all this time that it shows a little green light, and I was like a cat. What's that? <laughs> My. 
the joy of the redeemed. Now, you see, the prophet Isaiah was not just talking about their particular situation, but he was looking forward to that time when our Redeemer will come. And when our Redeemer comes, the eyes of the blind will be healed. The lame will leap like the deer. Streams will burst forth in the desert. And that happened, did it not? It happened through Jesus Christ, who is our rose blooming in the desert. Have you ever seen a rose blooming in a hostile environment? I've got one rose bush that's still blooming. Even after the snow, I think it kind of froze in place but the colors are still vibrant. The lyric says, give up your strength, the seed to nourish, that in the course the flower may flourish. It's talking about planting the crops, planting the seeds. That's planting the seeds of faith in your own heart so that through Jesus Christ, you will be nourished and grow in your faith. Pretty cool, huh? People look east. The third verse. Shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as the sun and moon together. Christ, the star. Love the star. And we go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. And we have heard the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Jesus was also called the bright morning star. Did you know that the star Venus arrives in the heaven before the sunrise? It is the bright morning star. And this is a symbol for Jesus Christ in these ancient traditions where they couldn't always talk boldly about Jesus Christ as we can in our world today. Focus, people. Focus on the heavens. Look to the east. Look to where the sun rises, and you will see the bright morning star that comes before it. Unless you live in Michigan where it's cloudy 24-7. People, look east to the bright morning star, Jesus Christ makes possible the sun to rise. Let it rise in your hearts. Focus on Christ. And then we come to the last stanza. I've been experimenting with AI. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. Now, y'all know I've been studying Revelation. Let me tell you what the pro how the prophet John describes our Lord. Oh, I had it. Where did I put it? Oh, there we go. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face 
was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. People look east. You see, because it didn't end at the cross. That was the new beginning. For in three days, Jesus did what? He rose from the dead. Unlike any other little G God who were not physically present, Jesus was physically present. People watched him physically die, and then people watched him physically come into rooms, eat some fish, and walked with them and talked with them and taught them. And he said, I will be coming again. People look east. For on that day when Jesus comes again, all the dead will be raised and we will feast at his heavenly banquet. It's a beautiful image that we see in Revelation. <coughs> Sometimes people get more focused on the bowls of wrath than what the author actually intended. What the author intended was for it to be known that Jesus is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And when he does come again that day, where do you think he'll come from? From the east. People look east. Abraham, when he was only Abram, came out of the land of Ur, came out of the east. The wise men came from the east to the west. People, look east. Don't just set the table. Prepare your hearts for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we come to the uh, communion table today, as we eat the bread, prepare your hearts. Give it once again to the Lord Jesus. As we come to communion today, what are your hurts, habits, and hang-ups? What are those things that keep you from union with Jesus Christ? Because you see, he loves you. God is love. And some people would say, God is vengeance. Hmm. That's a sad thing, I think. I would rather people come to Jesus knowing that God loved them than out of fear. People look east. It's not just a time to remember. It is a time to prepare. Best time. Let us pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for the words that were put into music to remind us of what we, the church, are all about. That it's not about presents, and it's not about Christmas trees, and it's not about food, and it's not even about gathering together. Some of the loneliest people feel lonelier at Christmas time because they think it's all about family and friends and get-togethers and parties. 
But Lord, help us to look to the east. Help us to prepare our hearts and prepare for your coming in new and unexpected ways. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our communion hymn, Let Us Break Bread Together, on the screen and on 680. 618. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, thank you, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, say it with me, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to our praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God. and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
home. You want to read? Please stand if able for our closing hymn. It came upon a midnight clear.
Thank you. 